about in its entirety in order for you to win the raffle prize. So we'll let you know that for sure next time. So, but th this is already working. First prayer request came in, it says right here, please pray for the Los Angeles Rams. They're gonna need God's help today. Come on, come on, let's, let's go. They used to say when it's the Giants beat LA. Now, if you're a Rams fan, nothing, uh, you know, I don't wanna discourage you today. We just have to pray for them. I, I agree. But uh, any 49er fans in the house today? Come on. Amen. God, mm, I am so, the Raiders, yes, we've got a few Raider fans. And, and uh, hey, may, may God bless the Raiders. Pray for them too. Okay. Well, y'all pray for me. I got to preach right now. Amen. And, and so I'm, I'm going to minister today on the subject. Wait, wait, wait. I'm going too fast. By the way, thank you again for being here today. I'm, you, you just have no idea how happy it makes me when I see you guys walk in and drive in the parking lot and come in. And, and I heard the Harley pulling today. I said, man, it made me want to wish I would have brought my motorcycle today. And, uh, but uh, just whatever you had to do to get here, it, it was funny because I was out there when uh, Super Mom and, and Josh came in with the kids and I was there talking to a couple of single gentlemen and um, uh, I realized that the single gentlemen, they just kind of strolled in like all carefree. But I looked at Super Mom and Josh, they've already worked for two and a half hours to get those kids up, get them dressed, get them all over here. And so we commend you guys, we really do. You, you know. Sometimes it's not how far you went, but it's what you had to overcome to get there. And, and so we just admire our parents and, and uh, getting the little ones up and dressed and off to church. And just thank you so much for doing that. I, 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 it's been a minute since I've been in that stage in my life, but uh, I still have to help get up the older ones and help get them dressed. Tell Jordan, no, you can't wear that, you know. Actually, he's the one who styles me, amen. You can tell by looking at these cool shoes here. And look, I even got red socks. You see that, red socks? And, and, and you know I don't go out and buy this stuff, right? They all help me because I need lots of help. And so I better move on before I get in trouble. I'm going to minister on the subject today. She inquired of the Lord and... And I was just busy reading scriptures a while back, and I read this. I'll, I'll tell you about it more in the sermon. It, it just popped off the page. And so I'm one of those preachers who believes that a sermon needs to be birthed it, through prayer, through spending time with God, and not so much a, a book that you just get sermons out of or something like that. But I really try to, to, to hear from the Lord. And, and so I pray today this message will be a blessing to you. I'm going to read Genesis chapter 25, verses 21. And 22 and uh, this is what it says now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren and the Lord granted his plea and Rebecca his wife conceived but the children struggled together within her and she said if all is well why am I like this so she went to inquire of the Lord she went to inquire of of the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for being so, so good to us. God, take this little bread crumb that I've prepared and let it, let it bring life to your church today. Let it bring encouragement. And I just pray the spirit of the Lord would speak today and our hearts would be captured, God, with a, with a love and a passion for you. God, bless our children that are next door and in the classes and the teachers and just everyone on this campus, let every heart, every life, no matter how young or how old, let them be touched and loved on by you today. And we'll thank you for it. And the church agreed by saying, and amen. And Pastor Christie and the worship team, thank you so much. Let them know how much we appreciate them. So today we're going to talk about inquiring of the Lord. And I truly believe, I'm of the persuasion 100% that all of us have areas in our lives that we need answers for. 
Maybe you would say it a different way. I just need direction in my life, Pastor. And I've heard statements like this. I, I, uh, why is all this going on in my life? What, what is happening right now? Others might describe it as, I just need a breakthrough. I, I just need God to move in my life. I just need to see something in my life that can change, Pastor. I'm even reminded of the words of King Jehoshaphat in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And this is what he says. It says, Lord, we have no power or might against this huge army that comes against us. And then he says, neither do we know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And I pray that that would be our heart, that God, we don't have any power to do this on our own. We don't understand what we need to do, but God, our eyes are on you. And when we get in these positions, thank God we're not at a loss. We always can look unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. And God says we can look unto the hills from whence cometh our help. Our help comes from the Lord. In other words, we're looking to you for an answer. We're looking to you, God, for your help and for your direction for our lives. And we confess today, Lord, there is nobody else, not a no, not one, but you who has the answers that I so desperately need for my life. I might even be preaching to myself today more than to all of you or to anyone else. But there's one thing I knew that when I read this story about Rebecca... When she had a problem and she had a need, Genesis 25, 22, 25 says, she went and inquired of the Lord. And I believe these seven words here is what God's trying to speak to us here today. She went and she inquired of the Lord. I think I counted that right. Looked like I was off one. <laughs> but she went and inquired of the Lord. Yeah, I added one word too much. She went and inquired of the Lord. Let me say it again for this group. She went and inquired of the Lord. Over here, she went and she inquired of the Lord. These seven words would change your life and my life. She went and she inquired of the Lord. And when I read the, the, these words, they just jumped off the page at me. They, 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 they leap into my heart so strong that I know what God is saying to us here today. God is saying, I have the answers that you need for your life. There is no problem too hard that God says, I can't solve it. There is no need too great that God says, I cannot meet it. But we must abandon all of our other options. And we must determine that we are going to inquire of the Lord. I am going to go to the Lord and I'm going to seek his wisdom. I'm going to seek his knowledge. I'm going to seek his direction. I'm going to seek his help in my life. Thank God for Uncle Joe. But Uncle Joe can't get me out of this mess. Thank God for Uncle Tom. But Uncle Tom can't fix this one. I know that God is the answer and God is the one who desires that we as his children would come to him. I don't know whether you've ever known this or not, but the Bible says our God is a jealous God. And when he looks at you, he loves you with an everlasting love. And he says, I can meet all of your need. I, I want to bless you. I want to take care of you from A to Z. And when we keep going to Uncle Tom and Uncle Joe, instead of to God, God gets a little jealous. That's not in the notes. That's free of charge. Amen. And what I love about this story is that she says, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to God, to get a hold of God for my life. And, and I need his help, and I need his directions for my life. And so I also thought about the words of Jacob when he told the wrestling angel. He says, man, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me. I think some of us need to say to God, I'm not going to let go, amen, of inquiring after you until I get the answer that I need, until I get the resolution that I need for my life. What I like about Rebecca is Rebecca didn't write any books of the Bible. She's not a prophetess, she's not a teacher, she's not a pastor, she's an everyday person. Rebecca is just, uh, amen, I shouldn't say just, but she's a mother. But when she had a problem or a situation in her life, she didn't just say, Sarah, Sarah, what will be, will be. No, she said, I'm going to go in and I'm going to inquire of the Lord. And we just can't allow these problems to camp out in our lives and stay with us forever. We need to learn to come to the Lord because God wants to help us. God wants to give us the direction. 
And God wants to do great things in our lives. And as I thought about this, I thought about areas in my own life that I need to get, to get a hold of God and get some direction in and, and answers for. And so I ask you to pray for me. And let's pray for all of us that all of us would hear from God and know what God wants and desire God's will for our lives, our homes, and our families. And that we would say, God, I can't fix this on my own. I'm not smart enough. I'm not wealthy enough. <laughs> Amen. I don't have it figured out. But God, I need you to direct every area of my life. That we would discern what's going on around us. There's a scripture in the Old Testament. I don't know where it's at. But it says that, that they had knowledge of the times. And they, and they knew what to do. I pray that God would give us discernment. So we could, man, talk about the end times. What is going on in this world? You can't even make heads or tails out of it. it it's moving so fast. But God help us to be able to discern what's going on around us. That we would know how we should live. We would know how we should raise our families. We would know, God, how to be pleasing to you in this current and present environment that we find ourselves in. A few people who took time to inquire of the Lord. I, I, I'm going to mention about four of them now as I preach on this. But the first one is King Hezekiah in 2 Kings chapter 20. And Hezekiah, it says that he was sick unto death. Now, it's one thing to be sick unto death, but it, it went from bad to worse. Because God sent the prophet Isaiah to him. And you talk about scary. Listen to what God said through the prophet. It says, Hezekiah, you aren't going to live. You are going to die. And he, this is what he says. Set your house in order because you're going to die. Boy, that'd make the hair stand up on the back of my neck. Amen. And, and, and so, Cain Hezekiah, though... When he heard this news, how many of you know when you hear bad news is when the enemy tries to reach out and put his, his, his arms around your throat and choke the life right out of you. The Bible says neither be dismayed. You know what that word dismayed means? Not to become afraid with any sudden bad news. Did you know that's when we have to fight the battle? And when he got this bad news, he didn't just call everybody and say, okay, I'm resigning. It's all over with. You guys just take this kingdom. I, I, I'm just giving up. I'm just going to quit. And, and, and so uh, he didn't do that, did he? No, he didn't waste his time thinking about, you know, throwing in the towel and quitting. What did he do? He immediately humbled himself and he began to pray and to inquire of the Lord. The Bible says he turned his face toward the wall and he began to weep, weep bitterly. And he began to inquire the Lord. He says, Lord, you know that I've served you the best. I I'm not perfect, but God, I've been as faithful as I could in serving you. I, I, I love you, Lord. I've loved you. I, I, I have a whole heart that, that's completely given to you. And he, he just begins to talk to God and to inquire of the Lord. And, and so I want to tell you today that he completely humbled himself. And he began to inquire of the Lord. And we hear a lot of bad news in our, life, in, in our lifetime. Things come, people come, they say things to us, and everything's not positive. And, and, and when we hear that bad news, we're going to have to make a choice. Are we either going to let that sink in and, and, and take that bag of groceries, amen, from the enemy? Or are we going to humble ourselves immediately and begin to get God's perspective on it and to inquire of the Lord, amen? And that's what he did. He began to look to God and, and he began to pray to the Lord. And so as he did this, this is what happened. The prophet who gave him the message didn't even get out of the palace yet. He didn't even get past the kitchen doors. And the Lord speaks to him. He says, return and tell Hezekiah. Look what happens when we inquire of the Lord instead of believing the bad report. Tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, thus says the Lord, the God of David, your father. Number one, I have heard your prayer. And I came today to tell somebody, God has been hearing your prayers. I have seen your tears. God says, I've been watching you. I've seen every tear. As a matter of fact, God says, I've collected every tear up in heaven. I have a bottle in heaven and I am collecting your tears. And he says, on the third day, you're going to go up to the house of the Lord again. I'm going to get you out of bed, and I'm going to get you back to the house of the Lord. And number five, he says, I will add your day to your days 15 years. 
Number six, I will deliver you in this city from the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city for my own sake. Can I tell you, Hezekiah, he turned and he prayed to God. And for him to pray to God like this, can I tell you, he had a relationship going with God. It says he, he knew God. I believe Hezekiah knew God. And you know what it says in Daniel, I think 11.32, those who know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Can I tell you, I want to know God better. You know why? Because I want to be strong. I want to, I want to gain strength. I want to gain courage. I want to be more bold. I, I want to be strong. And I want to do exploits. I want to accomplish something with my life. I want to see progress with my life. And the best way for us to be strengthened and to be able to say, I'm going to do exploits. Or I'm going to move forward. I'm going to accomplish. Amen. In other words, let's just put it down in flat terms. I want my life not just to be different, but I want my life to make a difference. Amen. I want to impact people. I want to make a difference in others lives <laughs> the best way to do that is to get to know God don't sit down for 10 hours and come up with I'm going to do A, B, C, D, 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 D no, you just get to know God let him strengthen you and God says I'll make you bold and strong and I will work through you to do exploits not you but through you somebody say this is good preaching pastor <laughs> Now, does God want to answer my prayer? Jeremiah 33, 3. Call unto me, and I will answer thee. Or you, I'm, you can tell I read the King James Version. Huh? Call unto me, and I will answer you, and I will show you great and mighty things that you know not. God says, if you will inquire of me, i got stuff I want to show you that you've never seen before. Stuff you do not know. And, Pastor, does God really... Want to answer me when I inquire? Listen to this in Isaiah 65, 24. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are speaking, still speaking, I will hear. God says, amen. I already know what you need. Of, and be, God says, I am willing. If you will inquire after me, I am willing to turn the situation around. And, 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 and so the takeaway from this point right here set your house in order can I tell you we don't have forever and we what, what this tells me is that we need to make the most of every day make the most of every opportunity if we're going to do something for God we need to do it now we can't we can't keep putting it off till tomorrow and putting it off if we're going to do something that that we know we should do today's the day today get started on it today today's the day set our house in order Make the most of every opportunity. But this is what I see most in this. We need to believe God for the impossible. He was sick. He was on his deathbed. And he told him, the prophet, you are going to die. But yet he turned his face to the wall. Why did he turn his face to the wall? I think because there were people present. and he. But you know what? He didn't care. Can we get to where we don't care? What? Can I, if, lady, if you're here. And God's spirit touches you. Let the mascara run. Don't worry about what we're going to see. Let the spirit, if, if God's spirit's touching you, some people respond just by being quiet and sitting still. Sit still and be quiet. Some people raise their hands and shout glory to God. Do that. How, but, but, but listen, let's be open and understand that God wants us to just let it out and be humble. Don't worry about what other people think. And he turns his face to the wall, but then it says he wept bitterly. He didn't hold the, the, the wailing and the crying back that others would hear it. Can I tell you, I'm not ashamed to cry in front of you. I'll, I'll cry in front of you anytime the spirit moves on my heart. And, and uh, matter of fact, I got in a lot of trouble with my kids over the years. Because I'd go to their baseball games and stuff like that, and, and they're all involved in their game. And I'm over there on the sideline, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just, come on, Dad, give us a break. I drove them crazy, and I tell, still drive them crazy when I tell the stories today, amen. Another person is Hannah, found in 2 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 1, and she inquired of the Lord. She was in a hot mess. Everybody say hot mess. She was married to somebody who was a polygamous, and, and he was a numbskull by the name of Elkanah, and he had another wife besides Hannah. And all I can say, if I wish Elkanah was here. Elkanah, what were you thinking? One wife is a big enough challenge. 
How on earth are you able to handle two wives at once? Could you imagine them going to marital counseling? She said, she said, she, he said, she said, which one said it? I don't know. It would be a mess. And, and, and there was, now I'm not an expert on this. I don't know a whole lot about it. But I believe it's rare for women in a polygamous marriage not to compete with one another and to be envious of one another. It would be the natural environment. And it's especially true when the husband has a favorite. And this Elkanah definitely had a favorite, and it was Hannah. And so this made her rival, Penaniah, very, very mad, jealous. She taunted her. And what she taunted her about was what meant the most to her. And that was she was childless and she wanted to have children and she wasn't able to. And Penaniah would taunt her and taunt her and harass her and harass her. This was not a marriage where they all rode off on the white stallion and lived happily ever after. It didn't work that way. And there was no getting away from one another because they all lived under the same roof. But of Hannah, listen to what it says about Hannah. In spite of all this, Hannah never ceased to go up to the house of the Lord. And it says she did so year by year by year. In other words, she never stopped in the midst of this problem going to church. She never stopped. She didn't allow her sorrowful state, her sad state that she found herself in, to use it as an excuse in this pathetic marriage, as an excuse to stay away from the house of God. That's good preaching right there, Pastor. Finally, Hannah had had enough. <laughs> she pushed back her plate. She said, I'm going to inquire of the Lord. I, I, don't, I can't take this. I'm going to inquire of the Lord. And because she inquired of the Lord, she got what she wanted and needed from the Lord. And, 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 and what I'm going to say to you is that because she took time to inquire of the Lord, you know what happened to Hannah? She got the desire of her heart. And God sent me here today to tell you that God wants to give you the desire of your heart. And it says, delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desire of your heart. God wants to step in and be your spinach. He wants you to be Popeye. He wants to make you strong. He wants to work through you, and God wants to show you what he is able. Don't you want your home blessed? Don't you want the work of your hands blessed? God says, you know what? Delight yourself in me. Some of you have desires in your heart that nobody else knows about, but God does. And God says, I am ready to give you the desires of your heart. And here's what I want to say, lesson from, from Hannah. Don't let a time of disappointment and discouragement keep you from the house of God. Hannah stayed faithful. She kept coming to the house of God. And because of that, she got her heart's desire. Can I tell you what else this teaches us? Is that if you're going through a very difficult or painful experience in your life, that what that tells you is that you've got a green light now that you can pour your heart out to God. And I believe some of us really haven't learned how to do that. Well, I'm just not a crier, Pastor. Well, that's okay. Don't cry in front of us. But when you get alone with God, please, if the Holy Spirit begins to work in your heart and God begins to speak to you and you begin to feel like those tears, are, let those, te those tears will have a cleansing effect. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be honest. We all have something to cry about. We all have some pain and, and hurt in our hearts. But you know what? God wants to wash that away. And one of the ways he does that is by us being humble, amen, and just letting it all out. Don't hold back. If God begins to work in you, let the Spirit of God do the work and let him help you. Let him give you the breakthrough. She got her breakthrough and got the desires of her heart because she poured her heart out to God. And I, I think some of us, the reason why we're just, we're close, but you know what? We just really haven't really poured our hearts out to God. And, and, and you really can't orchestrate it, but just be open with God. Just be honest with God and uh, get into your word. I've I, I, I just been reading the word and as I read, man, I say, oh, 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 and tears just start coming down the cheek because God's putting that word from the page down into my heart and into my spirit. And, and, and let God uh, bring his life to you. Let God bring, if you will, but, but, but we have to inquire of the Lord. Another example was the church. And, and that's when Peter got put in prison. Do you remember Peter? And they arrested him. They already killed, Herod killed his, uh, James, the brother of John, with the sword. 
And he saw that it pleased the Jews. So what does he do? He goes out and he arrests Peter and he puts him in prison. And he's planning on bringing him out and executing him right after Easter. And who is there in the prison? Amen. They got 16 soldiers. He's in the prison. Shackles on both feet. Shackles on both hands. A soldier here. A soldier here. Uh, uh, iron uh, cell door. Closed. Two soldiers there. And then he's got four more soldiers. Anyways, he had a total of 16 soldiers that were protecting him. But guess what happened? This is unique because he didn't cry out so much as the church. It said they made prayer for him without ceasing. And they prayed and they prayed and they prayed some more. And you know what God did? And why God did it the night before he was going to be executed, I don't know. But I think it's a lesson for us here today. Because what happened was... God heard their prayer and God sent an angel into the prison. And it says an angel appeared right there in his prison cell. And you know what it says? A light shined in the darkness. Can I tell you that when we pray for our loved ones, do you know what happens? God shines a light in their darkness. God begins to touch them. God begins to minister to them. I pray over my loved ones every single day. And when I pray, I envision the light of God, the, the Holy Spirit coming and bringing light into darkness to give them an opportunity to see and to know the love of Jesus Christ in a way that it's not just about religion, about church, but their hearts just infatu are infatuated with God's love and they're drawn because of his Holy Spirit and because of his love. That way, if I could talk them into it, someone else can talk them out of it. But if the Holy Spirit gives them just one dose of God's love, it's all over with. It's irresistible. They cannot say no. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. So, so he, 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 he is delivered. They, when he gets to the door, the door opens up. And then they go out the hallway, and there's a big iron gate that says it opened to them of its own accord. And, and, and Peter says, man, I have to pinch myself. I think I'm dreaming. He didn't even know this was, he thought it was a dream that he was in. And, and, and here's the thing. God heard their prayers, sent an angel. Because the church inquired to God, his life was spared. And, and, and this is what I want to say to you. Why sometimes we have to pray so long before we see our loved ones saved or see the answer. I, I don't know. I, I needed a, a larger home. Why did I have to pray for two years? I lived in a little house over here. We outgrew it. Why did I have to pray for two years before God gave me my home? I don't know why. All I can tell you, it was worth waiting for. I can tell you that right now. I've been there 17 years right now. And I, and, and, and I pay less for rent than I would pay over here. And it's three times the size. So I had to wait two years. So you may have to wait. And you're wondering, God, why is it taking so long? Let me tell you why. Because God does stuff right. We just want a quick fix. Fix it up, God. I want to I get past this stumble in my life. Take care of this. And God says, if I took care of it right now the way you think I should, it's going to fall apart six months down the road. You, you let me take care of it, and it'll be done right. Amen. 17 years. Waited two years, but I got 17 years out of the deal. Amen. I, another 10, I don't know however many long, but, but he's asleep in the jail and God sends the angel. So here's the, here's the truth about this, is what I want you to get. Is that when we pray for our loved ones, this, here's the main truth, don't ever give up. If you have p people in your family that don't know the Lord, don't ever give up. Keep praying. Even though, you, see you may not see it, but God is working. That's what's so beautiful, is we don't always see it. And we don't need to see it. We just need to keep praying, keep believing. But I, I have a little saying, devil, you can't have my loved ones. And it's true. I'm not giving them up for nobody. I am going to keep praying and praying and praying. We do this little illustrated sermon. I haven't done it in like 20 years. But we put these caution signs up here with flashing lights. And we call the sermon roadblocks on the road to hell. And so you know how caution signs up keep you from going off a cliff. Well, one of the things on there, it says mama's prayers. And in order for somebody to go to hell, they literally have to plow through mama's prayers. Because there's nothing more powerful than a mother's prayer for their children. And I want to enc encourage you mothers, keep praying for your children. You, you just don't know what God will do or when he will do it. But you can rest assured that if you will pray for your children... 
that God is going to do great things in their lives and uh, protect them and surround them with his angels, with his protection, with his power. We have a secret weapon of prayer, mothers. Don't ever forget that. And your prayers are so, so powerful. My mama died when I was 17 years old. She never saw me serving God. She, she would be so happy to see me pastoring the church right now. But, but let me tell you, mama may have died, but her prayers lived on. And mama, every prayer you pray, you, it, it's going to live on and God's going to honor it. So here's the lesson here. The church prayed because they inquired of the Lord. He was set free and he was delivered. And I believe we should never, ever give up on our children. And here's, I think, the last one. Amen. And this is Joshua. Everyone say Joshua. Joshua. Psalms chapter 50. Listen to this. In, in, in verse 15, Joshua is in chapter 10 of Joshua. But this, listen to Psalm 50, 15. Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you and you shall glorify me. Did you hear that? God says, if you will inquire of me in the day of trouble, if you will call upon me, I will, I, I, I might, maybe if you're lucky, no, I will. Do you know that God promised to deliver and to set us free? I don't know whether you've had any trouble before in your life, but I, maybe right now, don't raise your hand, whatever you do, amen. It, it, this is kind of a crazy story. I've never preached on this, so I was fascinated by this story I love the book of Joshua. I preached on Joshua tons of times and studied it. But, but this, is, this is interesting because here he is. He, God had told him, you know, you're taking over from Moses. No man's going to be able to stand before you all the days of your life. And as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. So uh, they got into trouble. Here, here, here's a real good truth. They, they went and they conquered Jericho. Then they got overconfident because a little town called Ai. Ahi. A-H-I. Don't name your kid that. Ai. And, and, and so they go to, con so we only need a couple thousand people. We can go, go over there and stomp them on them, no problem. And they go, and those, those warriors from Ai, they came out and kicked their butts, man. Just smoked them. It was all over with. And, and Joshua, Lord, why did you bring us here to destroy us? Other people are going to hear what's going on. He says, just hush up. <laughs> They've done, they done stole some stuff that they shouldn't have touched from the city of Jericho. God said, don't take none of the spoil from that city. That all belongs to me. That was, Jericho was the tithe of the promised land. I don't know whether you know that. But he didn't allow them to take anything from the first city they conquered. Because that was the tithe. The first belonged to God. And somebody took a Babylonian garment and a chunk, silver chunk of gold. And he hid it in his tent. And sure enough, it caused them to fall before their enemies. And so, And they had overconfidence. So let me just tell you. I don't know about you, but I've been humbled a lot of times. God, God, God you think, well, pastor's so spirit. No, God just works me over a lot harder than he works you over. Amen. And, 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 and so, where was I at? Oh, yeah. And, and so what happened was uh, they got humbled. And, and, and many times before God's going to give you a great breakthrough in your life or a great victory, he will allow us to go through something that will humble us where we feel like we failed, we didn't do good, it didn't work out, whatever. Why? Because God didn't want them to think, man, we just whipped AI with these 2,000 studs. Man, we're just like, man, we're good fighters. We know how to do this. No, they went in crawling to God. God, if you don't help us, we can't do anything. And, and, and so they came humbly. And, and so what happened was these five kings saw what had happened. And so five kings get together and make a huge, huge army. And they come to attack the Gibeonites that they had made a treaty with. So basically, everyone was mad. Joshua, why aren't we in there, you know, going after this? And he's just waiting on the Lord. Joshua is smart. Sometimes we get in too big a hurry, amen. And he's waiting on the Lord. These come, kings come against Gibeonites. So he goes to help the Gibeonites. And what God did is he just rounded five up together so Joshua wouldn't have to go to five different places to destroy them all. And so the battle took place. And, and man, I'm just telling you, Joshua and the mighty, they had learned their lesson because they had learned the lesson from Ahai. They learned to humble. They can't do it. They don't have what it takes. I'm going to depend on God. What happened was God routed their enemies. They just, to they were toast, man. This, this, they were, I mean, total annihilation. And, and not only that, but, but, when they begin to run off, there, there, there's so many of them, 
that they can't get to them all. So God begins to fight for them and drops these big old hailstones down on them. And God destroys the, more people were destroyed by God's hailstones than in the battle itself. And so here's Joshua, right, with a great victory. And these are the guys that want to destroy them. And, and, and so God takes it serious when there's something that, that the enemy is trying to put into our lives that will destroy us. And so God will fight against that. So what happens is, is now Joshua's there and it's getting dark. And what does he say? He prays to the Lord. And this is what he says. Lord, let the sun stand still so that I can finish the job here. I said, oh my. We're talking about planetaries. We, we know how, they didn't know how it worked back. We know how this all works. And God caused the sun to, well, we know it didn't stand still, caused the earth to stop spinning. Remember I shared this a couple weeks ago. It's spinning 24,000 miles an hour. Stop. It's going at 67,000 miles an hour around the sun. Stop. It, God just froze it in space. Why? So that Joshua could win a battle. Is there anybody here who's fighting some battles in your life? Is there anyone here who says, God, I, I need victory in this battle. This is bigger than me. Maybe it's camped out in your life a long time. I want to tell you, don't lose hope. Because with God, all things are possible. And if God caused the earth to stand still, then we know that God is interested in helping you to fight your battles. We have a little song we sing, If I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, the victory, the victory will be mine. And I just felt like God was saying that so many people, they're going to hear this word today. You're so exhausted because you've been fighting battle after battle after battle. And God says, stop it. God says, let me fight your battles. We have a choice. We can either fight. That wasn't too, too impressive, was it? Ah! Ha! Bruce Lee. I know, I don't look like Bruce Lee. But I fight like him, though. I float like a butterfly. I sting like a bee. And I'm not Ali. <laughs> and, 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 and where was I at? Oh, the truth is, is that it just isn't this just a wonderful story how that God's interested in our battles. If he would make the sun stand still in order for Joshua to have a complete victory. And, 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 and that's what I want you to know. You can try, keep fighting it and get exhausted and do it and do it and do it. Or you can simply surrender to the Lord, give it all to him, and begin to inquire of him and allow him to direct your steps. And what's going to happen is that thing is going to be fixed right. That thing's going to be taken care of because you can improve it a little bit. You can polish it up, make it look a little bit better. Oh, it's not that bad. Let me buff this problem up. Let's see, it's not that bad. But you know what? At the end of the day, that problem's still there. It's because now it's just going to get glossed over again. But God says, you stop fighting. You let me fight. And if I cause the sun to stand still, I'll get invo involved in your battles. I will fight your battle for you, says the Lord. He told Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat says, we have no might or power against this big army coming against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are on you. Josh, uh, Jehoshaphat did the wisest thing he could do. Instead of going out just to fight that battle with his own army, with his own skills, he says, I'm going to inquire the Lord. He humbly confessed, I have no might or power to do this on my own. I don't even know what to do, but I'm looking to you. And when we do that, God says, I will fight your battles. And not only will I fight your battle, but when your battle is won, it will be fixed right. Remember what he said about the Egyptians? They came after Joshua and them, and he split the Red Sea. And then it's funny because they're chasing after him with their chariot. God says, God started fighting for them. The wheels started falling off their chariots. And they said, whoa, man, God's fighting for these guys. Let's get out of here. They tried to turn around and go back. And the sea just. Whoosh. And you know what God said before this happened? Those enemies that are trying to destroy you, you'll never see them again. They won't bother you anymore. And that's the kind of victory God wants to give you. 
He doesn't want to just give you one round of victory. No, he wants you to get a KO punch and get that thing out of your life, win that battle, and have victory in your life. I don't know about you, but I'll tell you what, I'm so excited about this because what God is saying, the reason why I think God has me even talking about this is what he's doing is he's inviting us all to come and to inquire of him. That means he wants to give us answers. He wants to help us. And, and, and Hezekiah, you know, God, God helped Hezekiah when he inquired of the Lord. And, and I came today to tell you, it's not all over. It's, this is not the end of the road. And, and if you've had bad news or a bad report, it's not the end. You need to, you need to turn your face toward God. You need to, to humble yourself and begin to inquire of the Lord. Hannah, she was stuck. She was in a rut. She couldn't get out of it. She had a bad marriage. Had a, but, but, but she turned her face toward heaven, inquired the Lord. God gave her the desires of her heart and gave her a baby boy. The church, they prayed for Peter. And because of their intercessory prayer, Peter was delivered and set free. And, and don't ever give up on your loved ones, on your children, on your friends. Don't ever give up. You might be the only one praying for them. And, and lastly, we know that God wants to help us fight our battles. If he caused the sun to stand still, I know I just preached my whole message over again, huh? amen. Huh? Repetition is the most effective part of advertising. And, and so God wants to fight your battles. And the reason, the part, and, and she inquired of, she went to inquire of the Lord. Seven words will change our lives. Will we take what we need and let that drive us to take the time? And, and you say, well, Pastor, I just don't have any time. You're right. But you know what? God knows how much time you have. I like to tell our mothers, if you've got three or four kids running around the house all day, and the only time you get is when you go in there and lock the door to the bathroom. If it's only a half hour or 20 minutes, get your 20 minutes. God will give you more in 20 minutes than someone else will get in two hours if that's all you got. God knows what you have. God's going to bless you. God's going to help you. Give God praise today. Are you happy in the Lord? Hey, man, I wish I could sing. I'd sing victory is mine right now. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Are you all ready? Let's all stand to our feet across the building. Give me just a moment to pray. Please, before we're dismissed, if you would, uh, give me a couple minutes. And Father, we exalt you and praise you. God, take this little crumb now and let it be life to us. I pray, Lord, that our hearts would be captured today with an awareness that you have the answers. You have what we need. You have the direction. God, you have what it takes to put everything together. And I pray, God, that we would just have a heart to inquire of you today. As we stand here before the Lord and no one looking around just for a moment out of respect to God, the first step of inquiring to the Lord is just uh, really a step of having good manners. It's not polite to step into the presence of a great king and just to start asking for things. But the proper way to address God and to come to God is first to thank him for his sacrifice that he did on the cross, and to thank him for keeping our lives and saving us, keeping us alive all these years. But the first step is to receive his love by accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's really to humble ourselves and to invite Jesus into our life to be our Lord and to be our Savior and to surrender our lives to Him. Because it's when we do that is that when then it's proper next to, okay, God, I got this problem, I have these needs, but first we must respect Him and honor Him as the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And because He created us and bought us with a price, you know what the Bible says? He says, what? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? God says, I dwell in you. I live in you. You are my temple. And I believe today we have some that would say, Pastor, pray for me. I, I want to say a prayer of 
accepting Christ or making a rededication of my life to Christ. And if that's you with no one looking around, raise your hand and say, pray for me, Pastor. Pray for me, Pastor. Thank you for that hand. Thank you. I see those hands. Appreciate your honesty before the Lord. This message today is for the church, I think, more so than anything. Some of us that are here today, we, we need answers. We need direction. I've got several areas in my life that I need to inquire of the Lord for. And before we leave, I just pray that we would take a few moments. Jordan's going to play some worship songs. And let's just take this word and apply it to our hearts. Let's... Maybe there's an area in your life you need God's direction and leading and wisdom for. I believe today that God's going to speak to us. That God says, I have the answer. I know, I know what to do. Inquire of me, says the Lord, and I will give you an answer of peace. Better to inquire of the Lord now than to go around in a circle for many years and then come back to the same place where we're going to inquire of the Lord. Let's just take the shortcut and do it now. It's much easier. I'm going to ask us to take some time. You can come to the front here. We're here to pray. If you would like to come and pray by yourself, go to the left side of the church over here. No one will bother you. If you're over here praying, we'll leave you alone. If you would like prayer, come over to this side of the church to pray. And I'm just going to invite you to come. Those of you that raised your hands, come up and spend a few minutes in prayer. And anyone else that would like to come, these altars are now open. There will be no formal dismissal. We know some of you need to be dismissed. Just love you so much. Thank you for being with us today. And just don't disturb those that are still praying uh, as you leave. And so these altars are now open. Let's come and find a place to pray.